Today we're outside Bora Mode Test Center and I'm going to show you how to drive so you can pass your driving test first time. So I'm going to show you some tips that you can use anywhere uh, when you're doing a test any part of the country. So once you've got your car started, now you want to get into first gear. Now do your checks. There's no one really around here so I don't need to signal as such but if it was a busy car park, maybe you've got lots of learners walking around, you might want to signal to let them know you're coming out. Taking my time, my clutch is still down, not all the way up because if, if I bring it up too fast, it's going to go too, if I bring it up too high, it's going to go too fast. Here we're going to go left, so I'll check my mirrors, centre, left mirror, signal left, clutch down, braking gently. So this is quite a busy road, so I'm coming out really slowly. I can't really see what's coming from behind that car there, so I'm just going to creep out slowly, stretching my neck if I need to. And once I'm certain that it's safe, I can come out and then check my mirrors once I'm in the new road and then get in second gear. So this road is not that wide. I've got lots of parked cars on the left here and potentially sometimes you have parked cars on the right as well but right now it's nice and clear so it's gonna make it easier but it doesn't mean I'm gonna, I can go really fast. I'm doing, this is the 30 section here but I'm doing around 20. I don't wanna go too fast. because it's not the kind of road to go fast on. And we are approaching quite a big roundabout here. We're approaching a roundabout called Sterling Corner. And here we're gonna go right, third exit, towards Mill Hill. Cover my, my brake so I can go a bit slower through here. So this car's poking out a bit, so I'm just gonna go a bit slower as well. So I know I'm going right third exit, so I'm going to position myself towards the right as I approach the roundabout and then check my mirrors and then signal right as well. Keeping towards the right, giving that person some space in front of me. And I'm already analysing the roundabout. I want to know where I'm going. I'm going over there, which is the third exit. One, two, three. Keeping an eye on these guys. Signal, who's signalling to go to the exit over there so I don't need to wait for him anymore. Go straight to the centre of the roundabout in second gear the lines disappear here but i'm going to stick to this lane for now and then that lane over there is taking us around again once i go past the second exit i'm going to signal left checking my mirrors and then add more gas so you notice i've come off on the third lane here on the right hand lane i'm going to check my mirrors and signal left and start moving over towards the left when it's safe so right now there's nothing on my side there keep my signal on check again and then now I'm in this lane. I'll go to fourth gear. So this is a 50 section. I'll just close the window so you can hear me better. This is the 50 section. So now I can get up to fifth gear, doing just under 50 miles an hour. On this hill here, downhill, it's really easy to go too fast. So right now I'm just on 50 miles per hour. And if I'm not careful, you can easily go past 50 miles an hour without realizing. Checking around me as well, and I see the lorry in front of me braking, so I'm just going to brake a little bit as well, because whatever he does, that lorry driver does, it's going to affect the van, and then it's going to affect me. So I'm checking my mirrors as well as I'm doing that, making sure I don't get too close to them. See the van's braking as well, and here we're going to start following signs for edgeware. So I'm checking the signs. Here there's no sign for edgeware, so there's no sign for edgeware, so it must be a sign further down. And I can see another big sign in the middle of the road by the central reservation there. I'm just keeping my distance from the van in front. Checking around me as well. And then I can see cars on the left trying to enter this lane. And then I can see the sign for Edgeway is saying middle lane. So I'm going to deal with this situation first. Make sure that they don't come in front of me. And then do my mirror checks. Signal right. And then move over. Once I'm in the lane, cancel my signal. And check the signs again. And on the floor it says EDG, which is Edgeware, so Edgeware is straight ahead. And then also on the sign there's telling us EDG is straight ahead. When you're looking at the signs, the mistake people make is they only look at the direction. You need to look at what lane you need to be in as well. So those signs tell you you need to be in this lane to go towards Edgeware. Don't just look at the direction because all the signs are saying to go straight but you need to pay attention to which uh, lane you need to be in as well. And then that other sign said Edgeware is straight second exit, this roundabout, so that's what I'm going to do. 
So I know there's a roundabout coming up. So I'm going to think about which way is straight so I can exit at that roundabout. While I'm here, I can see the car next to me on my right here signaling left. He's in the lane for going right or straight. I think you can use that lane to go straight as well. But right now he's signaling to go left. So he must, he might want to go left at the roundabout. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep an eye on him. Hopefully he doesn't do anything silly. So the van is doing the same thing. So I think a lot of people here change lanes. So the guy has gone behind me. I'm going straight second exit. So it's controlled by lights, so I don't need to worry about the cars coming from the right, but I need to keep an eye on the lights, make sure that they stay green. Once I get here, I'm going to signal left. The lights change into amber, but I had enough time to go through there. And then check both mirrors as I'm coming off and then cancel my signal. So there's a 30 sign there, which I spotted. So you need to be really careful. Once you've come off uh, a dual carriageway, you need to be really thinking about how fast you should, you should be going because you will feel like you're going slow. But really, if you look down, you might be going too fast. We're going to turn left here. So mirror, mirror, signal left. I'm already in second, so I can keep in second, check my left mirror before I turn and then turn on my side of the road. Check your mirrors as I'm going into a new road. And then braking gently into this bend. Then we're going to pull over on the left in a safe place. So mirror, mirror. I've already spotted where I want to pull over. And I'm going to bring my car in. Straighten up my wheels. And then stop gently. Handbrake on. Neutral. Cancel my signal. And relax for a second. The examiner now will tell you to drive on again, which... Then just means to get the car ready. I'll do my checks. So mirror, center mirror, right mirror, over my right shoulder. I'm gonna, I'm gonna signal just because there are people further down. So I want them to know that I'm coming out of this spot here. And I can see there's a car parked or just stopped in the middle of the road, having a chat with the person on the left. So I'm gonna approach it slowly because there's a chance that when I get closer, they're gonna decide to move. So I'm just gonna approach it slowly, check my right mirror in case I have to go around them. I'm making sure that there's no one coming down the road uh, before I try to go around them. Keeping it nice and slow. And then check my left mirror to go back to the middle of the road. And then here I'm gonna mirror, mirror, signal to turn left. It's quite uh, a hidden turn here, so I'm gonna go slowly. I'm going to first, I'll check this side and that side. Sometimes people just check the right and then come out. You need to check both sides and be sure that both sides are clear before you're coming out because sometimes people might be driving on the wrong side of the road you might have a cyclist coming towards you on the wrong side so before coming out of a side road check both sides before deciding to come out and make sure it's safe here we're going to go right positioning myself along the center line gain first gear make sure it's nice and safe and it looks good carry on now and the lady was about to open the door but i think she saw me and decided not to here we're going to go left so mirror mirror Signal left. Getting into first gear again. I can see a police car coming. If this was a normal car, I would have gone by now. But because it's a police car, sometimes they go really fast. And around here, they do a lot of training as well. They train a lot of police cars in terms of like police drivers, sorry, for chases and stuff like that. So if you can stop and wait for them, just stop and wait for them. It's a lot easier than coming out and then having to pull over. And bearing in mind this is a 20 zone as well because of the school here and there's a sign there as well just because it's a school or a school near it doesn't mean that it's a 20 mile an hour road but there was actually a sign there so i'm going really slowly because this person is by the crossing but it doesn't look like they're ready to cross so but i kept my eye on them and then here back to 30. no rush because the bus in front of us is going slow anyway because in here, what people will do, they'll see the sign that's saying 30 and then, oh, let me go faster and I put their gas on, but you don't need to. Because the bus is going slowly anyway. Even if the person behind is getting a bit close, more reason to not go closer to the bus to make the situation safer. Okay, here we're gonna go left at the roundabout. 
So I'm gonna start braking gently. So center, left mirror, keeping now on the zebra crossing, looks clear. I'm gonna signal left and I'm gonna position myself in the left lane as well. Checking the right side from early. There's a car coming from there, so I'm gonna wait for them. And here, once the car's gone, it's a nice gap. I'm gonna aim for the right lane here because the left lane is only for turning left into Marks and Spencers. I'm not doing any shopping today, so we're gonna keep to this lane to go straight on. So very slow moving traffic. Using my clutch to control my speed. So up a little bit and then down again. Checking my mirrors here to make sure no one was using that lane to go straight. And this car looks like they're gonna try to park on the left here potentially. So I'm just gonna give them space. I'm checking my right mirror as well in case I need to go around them, but they've got plenty of space to do that without blocking my way. We're gonna take the next left. So mirror, mirror, signal left. And the Pelican crossing is gonna start to change. So that car should start moving and then I've got a turn here looking out for any pedestrians that might want to cross before I turn but it looks like it's good and I can check my mirror and then make my turn making sure I stick to my side and then I can carry on. Loads of uh, markings on the floor saying slow, slow, slow. So not a place to be zooming down. It's still 30 miles per hour here, but I'm going around around 20 for now. Once I get a bit more space, I can go a bit faster. Okay, I'm going to take the next road on the right. So I'm going to check my centre mirror, right mirror, signal right, braking gently, check my right mirror one more time before I make my turn and then check that side as well, make sure there's no one coming down. Now this is quite a sharp bend and there's potential that another car, vehicle could, another car could be coming through this way so I'm going to go into first so I can go through slowly, checking both sides there and carry on again. I'm going to pull over on the left. Here the examiner might say pull over on the left, ignore any driveways because there's lots of driveways here. I'm just going to pull over on the left. If they don't say that, there's a nice raised curb here, so I'm going to stop here. But if they did say ignore the driveways, it's not a trick, just pull over and you, you can block a driveway if you need to. Go into neutral, cancel my signal, and then we're going to drive on again. As you can see up ahead, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a sign there. Um, let us in the comments what this sign means or the name of this sign but if you get here the examiner won't tell you which way to go they will expect you to see that sign and know because if you ask them which way should I go they'll probably just say do what you think is best and we're going to turn left here because that's the only way we can go so this is a fast road, I can see already on the sign it says 50 miles per hour. So there's a potential that these cars could be going 50 or even more sometimes. So I'm going to wait for a nice big gap before I try to join it. Check my mirrors as well, make sure there's no one next to me trying to creep in before me. And then once I can see it's clear, I can go lots of gas. And then second gear, lots of gas again. And then here, braking because everyone's braking up ahead. We're going to go right third exit here. I can use the right hand lane, but I can also use this lane to go right as well. This is probably the best one to use because once I go off the roundabout, I'm gonna be in the correct lane on the left. So you can use this lane to go straight or right. So I'm gonna use this lane. I will signal right as well, once I get to like around here. So everyone around me knows I'm going towards the right of this roundabout. I know some people have said, oh, you shouldn't signal on a roundabout if you're going towards the right because people are gonna get confused because they're thinking you're changing lanes. But I've asked the examiner about this particular junction and they said it's best to signal here. Because you can go straight on this, on this lane or you can go right. So it's good to let people know, guys, I'm going towards the right. This signal is not telling people you're changing lanes. It's telling people you're going towards that direction over there. So now that's going to green, I 
I can start moving, checking both mirrors, and then making sure I stick to my lane, checking that mirror as well. And then once I get past the second exit, I'm going to signal left now, and then position myself all the way towards the left, because people here, they end up in the middle lane by mistake. Uh, normally I'd accelerate a lot here, but there's a car, a van in front of me going slowly. So I'm just going to let them move first. And he's turning as well, so I'll let, I'll let him do his thing. And then once he's gone, I'll put my foot down. So I can accelerate quickly. I'm going to third. Into fourth. Remember, this is a 50 mile per hour road here. So don't go into the high gears too soon. You need to use the low gears to accelerate faster. So we've got a car next to me and they've got the van or lorry in front of me as well. We're all doing around 50 miles per hour. But I want to see who's next to me, who's behind me. What's that lorry doing? Yeah. Don't get tunnel vision, guys. When you're doing your driving, don't get tunnel vision. A lot of learners just focus on the front. You need to be looking far ahead, looking next to you, in front of you, and then behind you as well, and then on the sides. Yeah. So you have a full picture of what's going on all around you. Then at the next roundabout, I'm gonna go left, first exit. It's still quite far away, but if you're going to go right, third exit, or right, fourth exit from here, you just start moving lanes to the right. But because we're going left, we don't need to worry about changing lanes right now. Lots of signs saying reduce speed now. These signs were here when this road used to be 70 miles per hour, and the roundabout is still not that close, so I wouldn't reduce your speed too much when you see this sign, just a little bit because I've seen learners reduce their speed a lot and then people get confused behind them. And remember we're going left, first exit. I'm in fifth gear right now. I can see everyone stopping up ahead. So I can start braking, check my mirror first. And I'm, in, I'm still in fifth. I can go from fifth into second. Mirror, mirror, signal left. Bring my clutch up smoothly. I'm keeping an eye on this light to make sure that it stays green. And the lorry next to me or this van next to me make sure he's got enough space so he doesn't encroach in my space and that was fine keep my signal back on check your mirrors as i come off straight away i see a sign saying 40 miles per hour once i go past this pedestrian crossing i can start increasing my speed check my mirror first remember it's 40 here yeah so we're approaching another roundabout in this roundabout, we're going to go straight. Second exit. So I know it's coming up, so I can start braking. I'm looking on the ground. I can see the left lane is only for going left. Remember, road markings are really important, so don't forget to look at the road markings, making sure that guy is going towards that side. Check my mirror. And then signal left to come off. Checking the speed limit signs back to 30 miles per hour now. So I can then increase my speed again. And 30 miles per hour. So once I've come off the dual carriageway again, I need to tell myself, okay, I'm back on the normal roads now. Be really careful with your speed. So I'm constantly checking my speed and looking ahead as well. I'm not staring at the speed for too long. I'm looking at it and then looking again to see where I'm going, who's behind me. Going downhill, start reducing my speed by braking a bit. I can see the flashing amber light there next to the zebra crossing sign or the school crossing sign, sorry. So if you remember from your theory test, when you see those lights flashing, what does it mean guys when you see those lights flashing? Actually, let me tell you, it means it's too many questions, right? It means you are, you should drive through there, uh, through that area at a reduced speed. And the, the, the sign told us what, to, what speed to do. It's like an advisory sign of 20 miles per hour. So I'm gonna do that just to keep the kids safe. Got lots of roundabouts. 
His car's turning right, but it's quite far away, so I don't usually wait for him or her. Check my right mirror. If they were closer, I would have waited, but they were far away. Yeah, I think we've cleared that school area now. But even though we've cleared it, I can't really do 30 miles per hour here. There's lots of roundabouts where I can't really see the right properly. Brake gently again here. Keeping an eye on that car's signal. It's got no signal on right now, so I can carry on. So Boromud has got lots of roundabouts, but the thing about them, most of them are really empty. So you don't need to worry too much about, um, you know, lots of dealing with lots of roundabouts because a lot of them are empty. But the ones that are not empty, you still have to <laughs> be careful and deal with them properly. And even if they are empty like this one, we need to check to make sure that they're definitely empty because sometimes it looks empty until you get there. Here we're going to go left at the roundabout. So I'm just going to check my center and then left mirror, signal left, start slowing down. I'm looking out for any cars coming from the right hand side, but those cars is going to, this car is going to block them, but then the motorbike is going to come through. That car blocked them as well, then I can make my move. So that roundabout is a bit tricky. I had, I had to learn I fell there for hesitation because they were waiting for the cars on the right to clear even though there were lots of cars coming from the left going around and blocking them. So practice roundabouts so that you get so good that you can use people that are blocking them or people from the left that are blockers and then you can make a move. Don't rely on just waiting for the right to be completely clear because you'll be waiting there all day. Here we're going to go straight. Okay, into first. It's a bit hilly here as well, so I'm looking at the road markings and straight is on uh, this side here. Checking the right, it's looking clear. Then I can make my move. So slowly up this hill. So I can't really see what's going on there. Now once I've got more visibility, I can carry on. We're going straight at the roundabout. So I'm going to start braking gently. Checking all those cars again. No one's got a signal on right now. But I'm checking again one more time. Because sometimes people put a signal on late. If you see it and you can and you can react to it, you should react to it. But sometimes if it's too late and you're already on the roundabout, you just have to most of the time just carry on or see what they do. Uh, we're going to turn left, so mirror, mirror, signal left. Take my left mirror one more time and then carry on. So this is a really nice road here. Don't get distracted by the houses. They're really nice. So focus on the drive. Got a nice little bungalow there. We're gonna turn next left. So mirror, mirror, signal left. Check the left mirror again. And then carry on. So you notice I'm not zooming everywhere. There's a lots like lots of turns. The road is quite winding. A few potholes here and there as well. Don't feel the urge to go really fast everywhere if you don't need to. Yeah, once you get here, you can build up bit more speed because it's nice and clear and then at the end I'm gonna turn left so mirror mirror signal left I can't see anything this is quite a closed junction because I can't see anything until I get really close to here because of the bushes there so I'll go into first check both sides looking good then I can make my turn into second then at the end I'm going to turn left so mirror mirror signal left again going into first 
looking good and I'm gonna pull over on the left in a safe place so I can see a nice spot over there so mirror mirror signal left and start braking gently bringing the car in towards the left and stopping here nice parking spot handbrake neutral and relax so let's do some independent driving from here uh, we're gonna go right at the end of the road and then left at the end of at the end of that road and then roundabout we're gonna go left so right left left remember guys if you're not sure where you're going ask but ask in plenty of time let's go so once we got the car uh, prepared do our checks if you signal and there's no one around you're not going to get a fault for this so don't worry if you don't signal and there's no one around that's also fine yeah, but if you don't signal when people need to see your signal then that's, that's when they can have a problem yeah? but if no one's around you don't need to put a signal on but if you do you're not going to get in trouble either so mirror, mirror signal right Approach it slowly, checking both sides. It's looking clear now. And that van is pulling up on the left, so I'm just gonna keep an eye on him because that will affect me somehow, you see? And it does affect me because he's in my way a little bit. So this is the kind of thing you wanna do as a driver. When things are happening, like the van pulling over before I even turned, think about that. Think about, wait, well, how's that going to affect me? Is, is it going to affect me? Most of the times it will affect you, so the earlier you think about it, the easier it's going to be for you to deal with. The mistake a lot of learners make is they just think about it too late and then they end up having to like do a rush job of braking hard and changing gears. But if you already think about it from early on, it's much easier to deal with. Just like this situation up ahead there, we've got a lorry parked up on the right. So potentially cars are going to be coming round like that car just did there. So there might be cars coming from the main road into this road and then turning suddenly around the lorry. But once I get here, I know there's no one doing that, so I'm fine. And then I'm gonna go left at the end here. So mirror, mirror, signal left. It's really steep here. I don't know if you can tell, but it's really steep. So I'm gonna go into first before I reach the end. Get the biting point to bring up slowly to the hill. I don't wanna creep into the junction too much. I'm not gonna use my handbrake this time. I'm just gonna use my foot brake and the clutch. So I'm gonna get the biting point. I want to come out here slowly because if I come out too fast I'm gonna overshoot and go on the wrong side of the road so you notice there I was just controlling my speed by using my clutch not bringing up too fast or too high and that way I managed to control my speed so it's 40 but not yet once I go past this sign then it's 40 so I'm gonna now increase my speed so you might get tempted to go into fourth gear right now because you want to increase your speed but it's a really steep hill here I'll show you what will happen if I go into fourth actually because I think people, but people don't realize what happens. So let's say I go into fourth. You see, there's no power. Even if my foot is all the way down, I'm losing power now. And if I don't do something about it quickly, I could stall. So I'm going to go into second and then add some more gas. You can always save yourself. In that situation, don't leave it until you've stalled. Go into a lower gear like there. Second was better because it was really steep there. And then I recovered it by going into second, adding more gas and then I could change to a higher gear afterwards. But if it's a really steep hill like that, don't change into a higher gear. It was because uh, the car will struggle and then eventually it will stall. Okay, remembering that it's 40 miles per hour here. going left first exit at the next roundabout so I'm gonna start reducing my speed from early because the roundabout is coming up now I'm in fourth mirror mirror signal left I can go straight from fourth to second I don't need to gear down to third I can go into second there are vehicles coming from the right so I'm gonna stop and go into first once those guys have gone I can now make my move so I'm from 40, back to 30 again. And then I'm gonna take the next right. So let's check my center mirror, right mirror, signal right. I'm gonna position myself 
quite a bit to the right, so I'm a bit in this box here. I can't fit my whole car in there because that box is tiny, but I went in there as much as I could, so that way if I had to wait there, potentially cars behind me could go past. If you fit yourself in there and cars still can't go past you, don't stress about it. You've done your bit, you've done your best. Some roads are designed like that where it's not enough space for you to, uh, you know, move out of the way for people. So this person should wait for me because my side is clear. But you notice that I covered my brake and I started braking just a little bit, just in case they were being stubborn. So that's why I was slowing down a bit again. Be ready for them to do uh, crazy things. <laughs> but luckily they didn't. Okay, checking my right mirror because I need to go a bit to the right. I'm gonna go right in this roundabout, so mirror, mirror. Okay, to second, there's a car coming from the right. Oops, big pothole there. Once they've gone, I can do my thing, carry on here. Then I'm gonna check my mirror, mirror, signal left. And then another sign, school sign with flashing amber beacons, though flashing amber lights. So you guys know what it means now, right? I'm gonna go slowly through here. Check my right mirror to go around this car here. That learner has, well, I thought they were gonna stop, but they decided to come out, which is fine. They've got, they've got lots of space. I'm gonna do mirror check again on the right. Keeping now on this pedestrian so that it doesn't, you know, step in front of me. Turning right here. So here it's easy to forget about these cars coming down the road here. They have priority. So once he's gone, I'll check my mirror. I'll check for any more coming down because that's a really fast road there. So sometimes cars can come zooming down that road and then if you're not careful, you might miss them. And they still have priority because they're coming past you and you're going to cross their lane to make your turn. So you might come from that way and do some parking exercise in uh, Morrison's, which is what we're going to do now. Or you might come from this way and then finish the test if you've done something else before. But we didn't do a parallel park, which I was hoping to do because I didn't see a car that was suitable. But so now we're going to do a, let's do a Ford Bay Park in Morrison's. So keeping it nice and slow through here. Once it opens up a bit more, once it opens up some more, I can add some more gas. Even use third. And then I'm taking the next right. So mirror, mirror, signal right. Going to second for this turn. Checking that side, make sure there's no one coming in front of me. Right, let's turn left here. So the examiner will say something like, um, do a Ford Bay Park any side that you like. So I'm gonna go, cause I'm already on this side. I'm gonna go on this side over here. I'm gonna signal right. I'll show you a little trick that you can use as well. It makes it a lot easier to park next to another car, but because we're parking on this side, I'm gonna park on that side of the car. I wouldn't park on this side of it cause that would be hard. Cause I might scratch the car, but it's really easy to check your surroundings. It's really easy to like judge where to turn because you can just place yourself next to this car here. That makes it a lot easier. And then going forward, making sure I don't go over that line over there in front of me, because you can't do that. And then secure the car. Checking my mirrors, make sure that I'm in. If I'm not sure, I can open the door. It's looking good. And I'm in. Then the next bit will be to reverse back out. Now the disadvantage of parking next to a car, especially if this was tinted or if it was like a van or something like that, you can't really see properly. So that's a disadvantage. But with that, like with everything in life, there's disadvantages and advantages. But now I can see through this car, there's nothing really there coming towards us. So I'm gonna check everywhere. And the examiner might say face that way. So I'm gonna reverse out slowly, checking behind me as well. Keep an eye on anybody that might come in since I last checked. It's looking clear. I'm gonna go out a little bit first. 
Actually, let me tell you, let me show you, because this way is easier. Let me show you how to face the car that way. Yeah, I'm going to show you how to face the car that way, even though there's a car here. So I'm going to come out first and then turn. Because if I turn too early, the front of my car is going to scratch this car here. So let me look around again. Making sure it's safe. There's a van coming through, so I'm going to stop for him. Once they've gone past, keep reversing. So I'm coming out quite a lot. And then now, I'm clearing that car. I can start turning now some more. And then I can stop here, because now I've got space to clear this car here. Check that side as well. That person was waiting for me. And then turning right at the end here. Check both sides. I've got this lady in front of me, but mainly these cars have priority. And anybody that's already on this side has priority as well. So this blue car has priority. Just because it's a car park, don't think that the rules don't apply. It's still the same rules. I've got the giveaway line here. So you need to be really careful coming out of here because you can still fail in a car park like this if you don't drive properly. So I'm just being patient. Hopefully once it clears up like now, check again. And then I can join these guys. And here I'm going to turn left. Mirror, mirror. Signal left. I can see there's a bit of traffic there, which is why it took a bit long to come out of here like normal. More than normal, sorry. So this person in front is probably turning right, but they're not indicating. But we know they're turning right, potentially, because if they were turning left, they would have gone by now. So it's, there's a strong chance that they are turning right. And they can't turn right because there's no space behind that van, which is why they're waiting here. So I'm just going to go into neutral because we're not going to move anytime soon unless until that traffic there moves. And there's a car behind me as well. Blocking this lane which could potentially complicate things but it looks like the road is clearing up now. So then I can move, check that side again, and then make my turn. Really slowly here, because there's not much room here, so I'm just gonna check my right mirror first, and then carry on. Just because I couldn't see anything here doesn't mean there's nothing there. Don't assume there's no one there, just because you can't see. Check first, and then when it's safe, come out. Lorry parked up on the left, so the road is a bit narrow. I'm already here now, that van coming down. Uh, hopefully it's gonna slow down as well. And there's a space for me to go to the left here before this car with the trailer. So I'm gonna go into first, give these people time to get out of the way, and then check my mirror, and then come out. Don't be in a rush to squeeze past before those cars have gone past, which is what a lot of learners do. Give yourself, give those guys time to move out of your way so that when you move in there, there's lots of space. I'm going to turn right. So normally you'd be turning uh, into the car park, which is right here, but we can't go in there because we haven't got the key and they won't let us in there. So I'm going to turn into this car park and then what they'll do is they'll get you to just drive into a bay. It doesn't have to be perfect, just so you're out of the way. Checking around. Um, my clutch is down so I don't go too fast. And then once I'm here, clutch all the way down brake, handbrake on, neutral, come off the pedal smoothly and then turn the engine off and then this is where they'll tell you congratulations you've passed your test. So guys I hope that was useful I'm going to do lots more uh, like this this kind of video I'm probably going to go to different test centers as well let me know in the comments what test center I should do I might not go too far out but let me know who knows I might be in that area uh, let me know which test center you want me to do and I'm going to start doing them. This year my target is to do more test centers so I can show you guys how to drive around them. Okay, so but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.